What to do YouTube? I'm doing the live here. That's the game bringing you part six of my generation analysis. We're almost getting down to the end. I believe ten is the last part because there are fifty overused Pokemon and we're doing five Pokemon each video. So that's a simple map. So part six out of ten. <clears throat> so let's get into it with the next Pokemon on the list, which is Jellicent. Jellicent, one of those fifth gen Pokemon that really um, changes uh, the metagame slightly. Uh, the pearls are typing. Uh, Water Ghost, pretty good defensive typing. Uh, it has really decent bulk. Um, a little bit low de uh, defense, uh, only base uh, 70, I believe. But it does have base 100 HP, which kind of makes up for that. That's actually surprisingly a pretty good move pool. It, move pool it has access to moves like Taunt, Will O Wisp, Water Spout. <laughs> you know, it has a lot of different moves Giga Drain, Shadow Ball, Energy Ball. So it has a pretty decent move pool. So you can do um, you can do a couple of things with Jellicent. Um, then also, I think it also gets Trick as well. So I mean, you know, choice choice specs Jellicent. You know, try that, try that out. Um, I actually think I did face a choice specs Water Spout Jellicent. That thing looked so hard. Oh my goodness. Anyway, rambling. Um, it also has two good abilities. Uh, water Absorb being a really good uh, defensive ability to be able to switch into water moves with no fear. And also his other ability, um, Cursed Body, which is actually a really, it actually can become really useful, especially against uh, choice Pokemon. Basically, um, it just um, Whenever you're hit with a physical, I don't even think it has to be a physical move, I think it's just any move. And uh, basically it's like a built-in disable, and especially against choice Pokemon, it'll force them to switch out. Now the major cons for Jellicent, I kind of found it uh, difficult to actually find cons for this particular Pokemon because it has access to recover, it's pretty bulky and all that, but I think the major cons are just more of a technical, from a technical standpoint, it really can't do much to grass types. And especially for 6th gen with um, grass types being nerfed, so you're going to see people bring, bring a... You know that proverbial grass type, so that way, if their opponent brings a um, a, a Breloom, they pretty much that Breloom is pretty much negated. Um, you know, with also uh, Venusaur and Mega Venusaur, you might you might see those because Mega Venusaur is going to be a pretty good Pokemon. Grass types are going to be around, and I mean, Jellicent can't touch them. I mean, they're basically Jellicent's basically setup fodder for grass types, and especially against Sun teams, that was definitely a big disadvantage. Also, Rotom, Jellicent, and I mean, really couldn't do much to Rotom, and. Um, you put yourself in a position where you know you're allowing Rotom to Volt Switch and get free a uh, uh, switch initiative on your team because you're kind of forced to switch out. Unless you're running especially defensive uh, Jellicent, that Jellicent can kind of take Rotom a little bit better because he can take um, it can take the Volt Switches a little bit better. But still, you know it's not really the best matchup for you because you can't really do much back to it. Um, and then Titar was another another big problem for Jellicent. Now Titar couldn't really directly switch in onto a Skull just because of that chance that it would get burned. But if Titar got in for free, like say they both switched into uh, the uh, switch got the switch initiative and then it just went into Titar. Now they're in the position where they can just pursue you or crunch you, and you're just you know you know Jellicent is dead at that point. So uh, those are uh, Jellicent's main uh, cons, its main weaknesses. Now the old sets for Jellicent, you really only saw the defensive or the specially defensive sets. The main set you saw was the Taunt Willow Wisp. Uh, stalled um, and then recover. So I think that was the most effective set because that set allowed you to deal with Ferrothorn. I mean, Ferrothorn is actually a pretty decent matchup for you if you were running that set, especially if you were able to Will O Wisp it, making a, you were running the defensive set. Those Power Whips aren't going to be doing too much to you. But uh, I mean, then you couldn't touch Celebi. So it's like if you run Shadow Ball for Celebi, then you can't touch Ferrothorn. So yeah, Jellicent, that's, that's that's probably Jellicent's main weakness, especially since there are um, a good number of um, grass types in the overused tier. So uh, as far as the next generation is concerned, um, we'll have to see. Maybe Jellicent will get some new support moves that will uh, help it push it up in usage. Uh, but currently, I don't really see its usage uh, going up too much. It'll probably stay about the same where it's at because, again, you know, um, with you know the grass types uh, being nerfed and a new introdu uh, introduction of Mega Venusaur, um, or the spore moves being nerfed, I should say, you're going to see some some more grass types in overuse, and that's not going to be good for Jellicent. So we'll move on to the next Pokemon, which is Gyarados. Gyarados. I'm already, I'm predicting that this Pokemon is going to its usage is going to go up slightly. Um, its pros are its bulk. It has really good attack. It has two good abilities and Intimidate and Moxie, just like Salamence. It has an amazing move pool. And you actually see this a lot for um, uh, first gen Pokemon. Like first gen Pokemon, every Pokemon can learn pretty much every move in first gen. <laughs> so but you see the first gen Pokemon usually have a wide move pool. Like Gyarados gets like Thunderbolt, Fire Blast, Solar Beam, like all these just like obscure moves for really no reason. And um, another, the main reason why uh, Gyarados is going to be great next gen is that it checks another check to Mega Ball while probably 
a, one of the better checks to Mega Mawile just because um, you know Mega Mawile or Mawile does get access to Thunder Punch, but I just don't see that being a common move on Mega Mawile. Whereas Ice Punch, Iron Head, Brick Break, Sucker Punch, those are more common moves. So other you know, other checks like uh, Landorus or Gliscor, they really can't switch into a pure power or a huge power um, Ice Punch. So you know Gyarados is probably one of the better checks to Mega Mawile. It's Gyarados, it's Skarmory. Um, and then Terrakion for an offensive check. Now, the main um, cons for Gyarados are going to be, well, one, I forgot, it's weak to Stealth Rocks. forgot to put that on there. It's a flying type for who knows what, why it's a flying type. I have no idea why. And um, its speed is going to be another one of its weaknesses. That's probably its main weakness is really hindered Gyarados this generation and why its usage went way, way down from 4th gen. And then another weakness is Ferrothorn. Ferrothorn is like Gyarados' natural enemy. Ferrothorn came into the game in Generation 5, and it was just like, I dare you to bring a Gyarados because it can't touch me. And uh, that's kind of what happened. Now, me personally, I ran Fire Blast on my Gyarados. Life Orb, Fire Blast, Ferrothorn couldn't switch into that. But most, most people weren't smart enough to put Fire Blast on their Gyarados. I guess they didn't know that it got that. But yeah, Gyarados gets Fire Blast, guys. So Ferrothorn actually should not be a counter to your Gyarados if you play it right. But uh, anyway, the old sets for Gyarados are going to be... Uh, D Dragon Dance, it was a sub-Dragon Dance set. Now, that set was completely well by Ferrothorn. And then there's the Dragon Dance 3 attack set. Usually people ran uh, Earthquake or Stone Edge and uh, Balance with Waterfall and Dragon Dance or Ice Fang, you know, whatever. Just three offensive moves. Again, not Fire Blast. <laughs> so, again, Ferrothorn typically was a great, great counter to Gyarados. And that's the main reason why Gyarados' um, usage dropped all the way down. Because as you all know, Ferrothorn is, what, top five in usage, I think? Um, I think, yeah, he was, in, he was in the first video, so... Ferrothorn is in the top five in usage, so, you know, Gyarados really couldn't do much this generation. Um, and then there were some defensive sets. Those aren't really often. Oh, like Gyarados also gets, like, Thunder Wave. It's just, like, a bunch of random moves. There's so many different moves. Now, for next generation, because Gyarados is such a good Mega Maw Wild check, I've come up with a defensive Gyarados set that's going to be very, very effective, I believe, for next generation. And this set's going to be a relaxed nature. You want to keep your special attack intact. Normally you would run with Impish, but that lowers your special attack. But Gyarados doesn't really need its speed anyway, so you're not really going to use much, lose much by running relaxed. Your EVs are going to be max HP, max defense. Your item is going to be leftovers. Um, I guess you could run the Wakan Berry. I think that's the one that weakens electric type moves, but I, I don't I think that's just safe. Um, you're going to need leftovers because Gyarados doesn't really have a reliable form of recovery. And um, its moves are going to be Waterfall, Fire Blast, Dragon Tail, and Earthquake. I actually I think I used this move set in one of my uh, videos. Um, one of my uh, showdown uh, showdown videos, yeah. But um, yeah, it's just max HP, max defense. Obviously, with the intimidate ability, that, that's going to boost your defense even more. And uh, you're going to be able to t counter physical dragons. Um, you're going to be able to fire blast the, for those Ferrothorns and Skarmories, Dragon Tail to get get rid of those um, set up Pokemon, Earthquake to hit um, Mega Mawile. I mean, this this going to be this is really really solid uh, defensive uh, Gyarados set. Now you can run this alongside a Pokemon like, say, especially defensive Sylveon, and you know, with the Wish support that Sylveon is going to most likely have because it's an evolution, yeah, that's that's going to pair really well with this uh, Gyarados set because Sylveon can take on um, those dragons. It can take on maybe um, hope depending on what Sylveon's uh, defenses are, maybe you might be able to take on Terrakion. You can run Sylveon plus this Pokemon plus another Pokemon for Terrakion, maybe like a a Hone Edge or something like that. And now you've got a really good solid defensive core going that can handle some, you know, you know, the overused threats. And I think that Gyarados, um, this set is going to be proved to be very, very effective, I feel, um, next generation with the introduction of the fairy types as well, mainly Mega Mawile. Um, so we'll move on to the next Pokemon, Mamoswine. Now, Mamoswine's pros, it has some decent bulk. Um, it's got uh, it's probably one of the better, one of the best dragon checks. Um, fifth gen with Mamoswine, um, even though it's, it's it's usage is still surprisingly low. I kind of expected Mamoswine usage to be higher um, just before looking at the list. It has really great attack. 130 base attack is great. Also priority Ice Shard. Uh, and then it has a, a nice ability through the Dream World of Thick Fat, which means it can take, um, well, it, it basically resists ice moves and then it can take fire moves much better. So that was a really nice ability for Mamoswine to have. You know, it would actually surprisingly live some fire type moves, like from Heatran, like if you tried to lava plume and a flamethrower, it would actually survive and then just KO you with an earthquake if it didn't already outspeed you. Um, and now its main cons were uh, uh, its speed. Uh, I think it's what base 80 speed. Same thing as Gyarados. Like you know, for overused, that's not really that great. I mean, you basically have to be base 100 or higher to have really great speed, unless you have a way to boost your speed. Um, and unlike Gyarados or, Dra or Dragonite, which they're in the same speed tier, Mamoswine didn't really have a way to boost its speed outside of a Choice Scarf. 
So that's probably Mammoth Swine, the main, main weakness, and that's probably the main reason why it's so it's much lower on the ladder than you would initially think because it's such a great dragon chat. Now the old sets for Mammoth Swine were basically Light Orb, 4 Attack, or Choice Banded. That's pretty much all you see. Well, you did actually see the, uh, what's that, the Stealth Rock Endeavor lead. That's, the, you, you know, you saw that on occasion. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think that, um, Mammoth Swine, again, it's gonna, it's probably gonna, I think another reason, another reason why Mammoth Swine was a little bit lower is because it's, other than Ice Shard, like, the other form of, uh, stab physical ice moves, there aren't that many good stab physical ice moves, and then Ice Punch, and then Fifth Gen added Icicle Crash. And Icicle Crash, it's not really reliable because I think it's like 85 base accuracy plus it's only like 80 base power. Like, it's not the greatest move. So I think Mammoth Swine definitely is going to need a much more powerful physical ice move uh, for Generation 6. Hopefully Mammoth Swine will get a, more, a much stronger physical ice, a physical based ice type move and that will actually really help it out. Um, and I think Mammoth Swine will pair really well with the, with, uh, with the Fairy type because then you'll have a, a basically a Dragon Counter and then a Dragon Check just in case... You know, you, you know. Let's say they predict your your Sylveon switching and they Iron Tail. You, you know, choice ban and Iron Tail. Well, then you can just go into your Dragon Check. So this Pokemon's gonna pair really, really good or really well with uh, with the Fairy type, a Fairy type Pokemon on your team. So you may see Mammoth Swine's uses go up slightly because of that fact. Uh, the next Pokemon on the list is Jolteon. Now Jolteon has great speed, base 130, great, uh, pretty good attack too, base 110. That's not special attack. I mean, that's pretty decent. And uh, its cons are it's just mainly main, its main con is that it's frail. It does have base 95 special defense, so it can take special defense or special hits a little bit better than physical hits, but still, uh, its base what 60 HP is not really helping it at all. And uh, mainly the main set you saw with Jolteon was the Life Orb for attack set. Um, um, I saw a lot of people running uh, Volt Switch, Thunderbolt, Hidden Power, Ice, and Shadow Ball. Now, I, I changed Shadow Ball for Signal Beam. I felt like Signal Beam was a much, much better, a much, much better attack on Jolteon. It, it dealt with Pokemon like Celebi a lot better than um, Shadow Ball did. Uh, I mean, it definitely, it, I mean, it even had a chance to Oko Celebi. I think especially Defensive Celebi could live, uh, but more than likely than not, it was able to Oko Celebi. I think, um, Bolt Switch, Thunderbolt, Hidden Power, Ice, Signal Beam, it's great coverage moves in general, all those moves together. And um, I think that Jolteon, I'm actually, I feel like Jolteon is, should be getting more usage. I mean, base 130 speed pretty much outspeeds everything. I think, you know what, the reason why Jolteon went down was because its, it's usage was high early on in 5th uh, Gen because tor uh, once Thunder, or Tornadus Therian came out, because Tornadus Therian had 121 base speed, which almost which pretty much outsped everything except for Jolteon. So Jolteon was like the perfect uh, Tornadus Therian check. Um, but once Tornadus Therian got banned, I guess people were like, "Well, we don't really, we don't really need to use Jolteon as much anymore." But I feel like this is such a good Pokemon. Base 130, it outspeeds pretty much everything that isn't scarfed and overused. It's got 110 base attack. It's got access to Volt Switch to, for the for momentum. And if they want to switch in something like Gliscor, well, that's going to get obliterated with uh, Hidden Power Ice. I think another reason why people didn't use Jolteon was because of Gastrodon, but Gastrodon is low, it's, it's really, really low on the overused list, so Jolteon is a really, really great Pokemon. But all other, but that said, I don't think that um, Jolteon is really going to be doing much much of any, much different, and 6th um, six, uh, six Gen is probably always going to be overused just because of the fact, because of its high speed and special attack, but I don't think that Jolteon is really going to be doing much. Again, we don't know what moves there are in 5th Gen, but I mean, unless they get something, unless Jolteon gets something really, really ridiculous next gen, it's probably going to be doing more of the same in 6th gen. Now, the last Pokemon on the list is Cloyster. Now, this Pokemon is probably the prime example of how one move, just one move, can change the entire scope of a Pokemon's, uh, how Pokemon's play. Because this Pokemon barely, it struggled to see play in NU um, in 4th gen. And all of a sudden, you introduce the move Shell Smash, and now all of a sudden, this Pokemon will sweep your entire team. And I think that, you know, with all the Pokemon that I've talked about so far, again, we don't know what moves they're going to get. So, and this is the, this, this, take this Pokemon as an example. All, it just takes one, one new move to, to learn, and you could be a, a, a threat. And Shell Smash with that move. So, Cloyster, the pros are, um, obviously Shell Smash. It also had a, has a nice ability, Skill Link, so it basically makes, it's, uh, after Shell Smash, Ice School Spirit just going to Oko everything. And, um, Ice Cold Spirit hits through, it hits through Focus Sash, which is really great, um, and, and um, it's just a strong, uh, uh, hits five times, and a strong stab move to use with, alongside Shell Smash, so um, Cloyster's ability was one of the reasons, uh, uh, coupled with Shell Smash, why it became such a potent offensive threat, and then uh, defense, it has 180 base defense, so even after Shell Smash, it can take a move like Bullet Punch uh, fairly well. 
considering the fact that it has 180 base defense. So even with uh, minus one defense, it can still take physical hits very, very well. Now, uh, its main con is its pathetic, pathetic special defense. Like, pretty much any special attack is going to kill for it. Like, even, like, Shadow Balls from Jealousy after a Shell's Mask just freaking killed the thing. Like, that's probably its main weakness is that it can't take special hits to save its life. Now, the old sets you're going to see, or you, that you saw, were obviously Shell's Mask was Life Orb or Power Herb. And what I call the Sash Smash set, which is basically Focus Sash plus Shell Smash, which guaranteed you a uh, Shell Smash no matter what. This uh, the Sash Smash set. It's hard to say Sash Smash. <laughs> um, was was um was a very very potent late game sweeper, uh, especially if you had a couple that with a Pokemon like Domfan or um, or Espeon. Make sure the rocks didn't get up, and then you just wait in until like you know the major major threats that could counter. Cluster, we're gone. Get it in for free on something. Let something not get it in and just shell smash, and it's just game over. And um, there's nothing you can do now. I mean, that was probably that was a very very potent threat, especially if they had very very good um, hazard defense on their team. Um, Cluster, uh, for as far as next gen, again, as I said, I don't want to say anything about Cluster because I mean I feel like it just it needs like a more a more reliable physical water type move because right now it has Razor Shell. Which isn't the greatest. It's sort of like base 90 or something, but 85. But it also has a chance to miss, which is not the greatest. Or you could run Waterfall. Um, uh, but outside the rain, after a Shell Smash, even like Jirachi that's not invested in defense can live a plus two Waterfall from Cloyster. Um, so running it on a rain team was really, really good as well. Uh, because that bo that boosted up its uh, water type moves. But uh, I really feel like it needs like a, a, a water move that hits five times. That would be really, really great for Cloyster. Or just a much more powerful physical water based move other than Waterfall or Razor Shell. Um, so uh, as far as Cloyster is concerned for next gen, I don't really think it's going to be doing much differently. I mean, it got Shell Smash. I mean, it doesn't really need anything else besides, you know, a couple new moves. But even if it didn't get any new moves and it stayed exactly the same, it's still going to be a super, super, super potent offensive threat next generation because of the ability, because of its ability to Shell Smash. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, and I'm out of here. Deuces. See you tomorrow.